what's crack guys so I'm gonna have to re-scrim that one I've already scraped down most of my stipple here probably bring that scrim on out a bit more so next I'll also have to re-screw that so I'm just plastering around the wire at the top I find it gives a much better result in the finish and be using make good plaster on this one again mask first and give it all a good good scrape down gonna try and get as much high spots off as I possibly can make my life that much easier and so guys how it strapped up somebody was asking me and it's just really the the foot you stand on is foot to foot, I think American meets, so the slat in each other. And then you strap up, strap up, and you do at least one at the foot. So I'm going to take them apart here and show you this. Basically, one ball at the foot. Obviously, I have the more comfortable straps, but if you have the, the original straps, it works all the same. I always strap them down to this, well, nine times out of ten, I drop them down. So, just yeah, the on the strap and um, on the strap the bottom and they just come apart so just so you just sort of know it's one's upside down foot in and cup in cup goes in and in at the bottom and down and then just strap them up strap them up and they're solid Good for storage. Nice to be handy tip if anybody doesn't store them up there. Another quick tip. How I get my height, make sure my height's okay. Is just basically, if I put the foot on the ceiling, make sure my head has a bit of clearance under the ceiling. Getting them screwed off can be a bit of a challenge at times. Whether they're square heads or just flat heads. This occasion was flat head, but a point I was able to finish, fit it. So probably the most important part after scraping it all down is getting a good coat of PVA on and depending on the type of PVA you use and most will recommend doing a 5 to 1 and then a, a 3 to 1 and the things we do when we're waiting on PVA to set just to kill a bit of time I'm sure all the spreads watching us understand my pain when it's winter time there's no heating in the house and the ceiling's hanging around and you're busting to get it on so here we are ready to mix and again too lazy to carry my big refine mega mixer up so I'm just using the the ladle drill here and a good mate of mine says that ladle owe him um, new hearing because the high pitch drill has made him lost his hearing a little bit so yeah bear that in mind guys if you're going to use them drills they they are quite noisy saying that now this wee drill does mix up skim very very well as you can see it's quite a big bucket I've mixed here and I'm mixing them to make good a wee bit thicker than I would mix my normal skin as well as this is a bit of a texture on it so I'm going a wee bit heavier with my first coat just to, to make sure I get it and with this plaster or any plaster for that matter just build it up slowly guys don't, don't just pour two bags in and and have a go at that as you don't really want to be wetting up your plaster you just want to get it mixed to the consistency that you want whether it be you know nice cream or peanut butter whatever it is that you feel comfortable with and get a good finish with is the way to stick at and the better you get the you know the best of both worlds you'll be able to use you know thicker or wetter I'm sure and you can see this stuff's creamed up nicely and it's kind of standing up when I scrape around the edges so that's what I'm sort of after and don't really want it pouring down my arm when I'm skimming the ceiling with it so I'm going for that wee bit more body on my mix here 
and again just make sure you mix the bottom, the middle, the top, scrape the edges you don't want no lumps in it and no big lumps of powder in your plaster so just you know they say 80% of plastering is in the mix so big shout out to all the labourers out there who do the mixing for a play very important wash the drill after every use or you'll be using the plunger and nobody wants to mix with them so treat the drills well guys keep them well washed I do know I have that drill in a, a different video where I let it go one time to save the three walls I had on as it was quite warm so here we go my PVA is tacky my mix is ready and I'm just getting it all on now I do find this make good plaster very very nice to to work with the hot and trial I've, I've said that from the start um, for sure there's room, room for improvement on it um, I know a lot of guys really detest the make good plaster but find the more you could use anything the better you get um, and obviously you know I do prefer carlite and multi skin to the make good plaster so I will obviously always go for them first but fingers crossed make good keep on going and keep trying to make their products better and better um, no a lot of guys say that their their brown coat is much better and their bonding is great I've used their bonding personally I haven't used the hard wall just yet do have a small job coming up with their hard wall passing that I intend on making full use of I have two bags of it so hopefully it'll be enough and see how I get on apparently it doesn't smell eggy like other brown coats but or hard wall coats same, same thing in my opinion but you can see just going to try and get into a routine here just sort of working around the bucket here and throwing one angle on here at a time and again I'm just sort of going backhander on it normally don't um, but you know get it all on try and get into a bit of a, a routine with it and um, you'll find everything will follow using my Refina Finitex trial here with the Pointsman Hawk Probably one of the strangest looking hawks out there, but for me, it's probably the best. So, I have it all coated, and I'm just going to give it all a quick flattening before I, I stick my second coat on. Um, for that, the reason for that is don't want any of them lines getting harder underneath the, the next coat and causing me any turn or anything. I do find my goods not too bad that way, but you know. I don't want, I just don't want it, so I don't want to have any issues when it comes to tightening up with my second coating. I want it to be as flat as possible before I start my second coat. Yeah, let the first coat take up, bite into the ceiling more. Have you guys ever seen a face for radio? But yeah, here we go for the second coat. And again, I think it makes this one that slightly bit lighter. It's it's not not too wet, but again, I just just wanted to spread a wee bit nicer and make sure it doesn't drag my first coat at all. So that's my thoughts and plans on this bigger ceiling. Is probably what's the previous ceiling where I I make a stipple ceiling flat and smooth with make good plaster, and if not, it's on the channel. And also, I'll try and get it in the description always do say that, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, so if you do want to watch it, I'm sure it'll be if you go on the videos on the channel, it'll be a couple of videos back and I did say the title, so making the stipple smooth with me good plaster was the title on that and basically on this video as we go, I'm just going from one angle to the middle, get myself into a bit of a better routine with this coat now and I'm just trying to keep it as neat as possible I am using the Refina Finitex trial which I haven't completely broken it in yet so you can see it's leaving a few lines and again I think the make good even with my most broken in trial was 
still leaving some lanes as it's it's very sticky. It's very sticky stuff, so you know, if you mix this stuff tight and you're doing a small patch or small steam, there would literally be I mean, nearly nearly zero chance of making a mess because it it is nice and creamy and sticky and fluffy. It won't you won't drop it very easy. Um fine skim and, and bonding's fine as well, but this to me has a wee bit more body to it, different texture and almost like there's a glue through it as well, so you will find that you'll not you'll not drop too much of this stuff. You can see I'm, I'm motoring on quick enough and trying to keep it, like I say, trying to get on as quick as I can while keeping it as neat as I can. So I think that's that's the main focus on the second trial guys is to leave it in such a way where it's flat and it's almost like a flat man already. So you know it'll speed you up time and time again. You every stage after this will be so much quicker if you pay attention and go as neat as you can at this stage. Mark mark my words. And I know other good plasters do the same thing. Ones I've I've learnt with and ones I plaster with are, are on the same mindset as myself. Of the neater neater you coat, the easier the trial it is. So why give yourselves more work guys? You know, get it as neat when it's soft and easy to to move around, don't don't kill yourselves. Although I know the super flexes that Refina have out now and, and other companies really do take a good lot of the stress out of the, the arm. And again, years ago when super flexes first came out, I know when I was trying them there was a lot of people thought they were a gimmick and thought they were they were they were rubbish and they weren't gonna last. Um, don't get me wrong, they don't last. A uh, mate of mine just tipped his off a scaffold bar basically, and it was there was an unrepairable nick out of it. And um, he spent some good money on that particular one, which was a uh, uh, Marshalltown. And it took no abuse whatsoever. One, one hit off a piece of metal, and it was done. So you do have to look after them. But you know, if you look after them, they actually do look after you because they take so much stress and strain out of your arm. But that's that's the kind of thing I think that the super flex trials do and speed skims, the likes of this super proof spatula and ties like spatula. I think if there's things there that can make the job that bit easier and less stressful on the body, you may as well take that up with open arms and it's similar to my advice, guys. My advice is always to try and make my life... It, it's things that make my life as easy as possible. I know I don't always do the easy thing. Sometimes doing it the hard way is the better way. But, you know, if there's an easy way that's right, I do always try to push it on to you guys and, and try to show you my, my secrets and my tips that make my plastering life easier. And if I find a way... I'll definitely share it with you at all times. And just like these tools, I hope my methods also have helped you out over the, the years or the coming years if you're new. And I do recommend subscribing if you are. That it'll really, really hopefully jump you forward on your plastering career if you've chosen to do this route. Not the most elegant job in the world, but you know. Um, it's better than doing some other things, you know. A um, bit of a different view for you on this one. And I'm going to try and upload this clip with a different sort of sound effect in the background, you know. But here's here's it up close, guys, basically. You can see literally nothing coming off the trial. Not, not overloading my hawk on the trial and putting, putting manageable amounts on. And... I recommend you do that yourself as well. But you can see that Finitex trial is coming in nicely. I have done work with it before and I just thought I'd give it a go on this scene. Um bit bigger than what I have done it out used it on previously, but I think it's time that I, I, I try to break a few more trials in. You never do know when your good skimming trial is gonna be its last day, so you want to always have a nice backup. I also have some Tyzak trials for backups and Spear and Jackson ones and stuff as well. So 
And I'll always have them in my corner waiting. Again, you know, I could plaster the scene with a brand new trial and get a good result, but like I always say, trying to make things easy for yourself and the idea of having two good skimming trials ready is that precise thing what I'm saying is making life easy. Having a nice backup and it's gonna make your life easier with a good broken in trail. Probably one of the only things in life that gets better with time is plasterous trials and, and probably wine as well. But I'll leave that to all the, the wine experts out there. But here it is up close guys, so let me know what you think of the make good plaster hearts coating here. Do you think multi skim and car light finish plasters coat better? I think the stuff actually for, for coating on is beautiful. I think if they could just tweak certain setting times and working times somehow that the stuff would come in so much better. But you know, if you don't keep trying something or using something, you never will learn. So tool I mentioned earlier, super proof. Um, I think you can get them off super proof online or Rambo tools. I would recommend getting them from Rambo tools. And I have this on the pole here. I didn't have the strength to pull it off when it was up on the stilts. So it's quite quite a good grip on the the attachment there guys. A very very good grip on it. And you can see how nicely it's actually flattening in and keeping my angle straight here also. Keeping the blade flat, if you notice as well, I'm not turning the finish back off. I'm just mostly trailing in. Now, this is coming in almost neat enough where you could leave this. You wouldn't need to give it another pass on the edges with the trowel. And again, if I can test things out guys and I think they're good, I'll certainly always say. And again, like the speed skim, if you see me using this, on more videos in in future in years to come you'll know you'll know what I think it's good. Obviously I could like I said I was talking to the subscriber before and I could sure have rounded them edges in on this and made it you know let leave even even less lines but I like to break tools in more naturally. I know I said do things the easy way like but breaking things in naturally you know, you'll know, you'll you'll learn more about the tool than you will if you just go ahead and sand down corners and, and rub it in with a bit of sandpaper and stuff constantly or a stone, sharpening stone to try and wear it in. I tend to find that these stone here. Who 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 hates stones like uh -huh. you never want stones in your product. But yeah. A couple of wee bits there, I'm just pointing out there be ho hollows I'll have to fill them out and just giving it another quick flatten in down off the stilts for the for the wind basically and I filled in that area there was two areas needed filled in and one was above the door pointed it out and one was actually above the camera so what I did is fill them in and then jump down and just wanted to straighten the whole ceiling with this super proof spatula and I must admit it so far so good with this tool and definitely impressed with the pole and and the tool itself the attachment's great also and there's a bit of flex in it i'm gonna try and get some more footage of me super flex and stuff with it basically and here we go on up close and controversial using a plazi flex for my quick flattening so a lot of people don't like the plazi flex the way i use it here but you know if it works it works but why not test things as well guys you know you never know when something's going to be easier but i find my stuff's really really soft here so i just want to glide over it lightly just taking out my lines and flatten it in and you will see that you can still move the stuff about with this plazi flex and you can still slightly cut it now you did also watch me flatten in the whole ceiling with a spatula so i know there's no massive holes or 
dips or big big massive lanes so really I'm just taking out a few lanes here and also cleaning my angles as I go another recommendation guys is to clean your angles as early as possible and basically on every every trial every pass try to clean your angles as you go and uh, personally I think this is where I like the Plazi Flex the most is just a quick flattening I find it quite light and smooth and it takes the lines out um, I don't know what users are seeing on the video some people won't, won't see it that way they'll they'll think that it's just for polishing and that's fine I don't disagree with that either I'm sure you could polish it with it no problem I do prefer super flex for polishing in fact I've, I don't even think I've tried the plazy flex with the polish um, I know it will take it up like glass because it's a plastic blade but for some reason I just really always liked the finish I get with a super flex so it's another thing to say guys once something's working for you you don't gotta change it you know stick with what's working but at the same time you know keep your keep your mind open to other ways and better ways because if what you're doing all of a sudden isn't working for a particular job you know you're gonna find yourself needing a, a, a plan b so just keep keep it in mind that you might want something some other kind of way of finishing something and i'm by no means finished with with this ceiling but i'm almost finished with this video and if you're disappointed with that i suggest you watch our next video that should hopefully pop up or you know get on the channel subscribe if you haven't already and watch the other one of this make good plaster or you know like i always say if you watch a hundred of these videos or you watch this video a hundred times you most certainly will not be a worse plaster i would imagine you'll be a better one